It's been another big year for Hollywood, and this year's box office charts are again dominated by Disney blockbuster movies. Avengers Endgame, the biggest movie of the year, earned $2.7 billion worldwide. But one director doesn't consider the comic book genre to be true cinema, and his comments about Marvel have kicked off a heated debate, illustrating the age-old friction between art and commerce. The Marvel-type pictures, where, where the theaters become amusement parks, that's a different experience, and it's like, it's not even, it's a, I was saying earlier, it's not cinema, it's something else. Martin Scorsese, whose credits include The Wolf of Wall Street and Taxi Driver, is out promoting his newest movie, The Irishman, which will have its Netflix debut on Wednesday, November 27th. Scorsese first aired his beef with the Marvel genre in a controversial Empire Magazine interview. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. On one side, you have the big money makers like Marvel and the DC Comics franchises. These make billions at the box office. On the other side, you have more risky projects like Scorsese's The Irishman. Paramount opted to halt its involvement with this picture, even though it comes from one of cinema's most bankable directors. The long length, expensive CGI, and possibly even the age of the actors involved all weighed against it, said Scorsese. Scorsese, like most big film directors, is committed to showing his movies in theaters. He ended up making The Irishman with the streaming platform Netflix, which prioritizes bringing films to people at home. The Irishman languished for 11 years until Netflix agreed to pick it up and agreed to commit to its big budget north of $125 million, according to Hollywood news outlet Deadline. It's already won rave reviews from critics and is being discussed as a potential Oscar contender. Movie box office sales in 2019 are unlikely to match last year's record 11.8 billion. They're currently tracking at 9.8 billion year to date. Theaters and studios are looking to attract youngsters with big selling blockbusters. The streaming platforms are increasingly stepping in and backing individual filmmakers, from Scorsese to Alfonso Cuaron, who made last year's Oscar winner Roma for Netflix. Amazon has released movies in theaters too, while Apple also has big plans for theatrical releases. And in the process, they're changing the economics and the definition of cinema. Typically, theaters have a window of 90 days to show movies exclusively. And one major distributor, AMC, wouldn't agree to show The Irishman because it didn't want to shrink the so-called window. The streaming platforms are even leasing theatres to get red carpet press treatment, as well as a crucial component of entering the Academy Awards. On Monday, Netflix announced an eye-popping lease for the iconic New York Paris theatre. It also owns part of the Egyptian theatre in Los Angeles, according to Variety. Ascertaining movie profitability is a dark art, and it's subject to notorious Hollywood accounting. But one Forbes writer suggests that around 80% of all movies lose money. Researchers at the University of Iowa back in 2016 found that one third of 2,500 movies that they studied were at profitability. That's often not the concern of creatively driven filmmakers. Where do young people go to get their films financed now? I have no idea. And then when you get them made, where are they going to be shown? When the theaters were all taken over by the theme park films, <laughs> where the theaters have become amusement parks. Now, that's all fine and good, but don't invade everything else. Films are films. You know, everybody doesn't like his stuff either. Everybody's got an opinion. So, I mean, it's okay. I ain't gonna stop nobody from making movies. Like Scorsese's dogged gangster characters, he's not backing down. In an opinion piece for the New York Times, he wrote, for anyone who dreams of making movies or who is just starting out, the situation at this moment is brutal and inhospitable to art. And the act of simply writing those words fills me with terrible sadness. Scorsese says Netflix made a commitment to a full budget, no interference, and the time he needed to get it made. Still, The Irishman may be the first signs of real compromise between Netflix filmmakers and theaters. Moviegoers will get to choose where and how they see it, and the movie will continue its theatrical run even after it debuts on Netflix. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.